Well, good morning, Homestead homies. Happy new day. Over the years, I've had many, many comments on our videos on how in the world do you keep the weeds out of your garden? So I thought today may be a good opportunity to allow me to share with you my 10 tips on weed control for your garden at home. I'll be right back. <music> Well, welcome back, friends. I, broke, I wrote down 10 little tips in my little uh, garden book here I thought I'd like to share with you today. Maybe, maybe it'll give you a couple of ideas for your own garden at home and on, on uh, trying to control these aggravating weeds. But um, the, the first tip I want to give you is no herbicides in the vegetable garden at all, especially Roundup. I, I never spray anything in my garden to try to kill weeds. The, the dark truth of it is, is it just simply takes work to remove weeds, but it's a necessary task of gardening. I would say that it's uh, definitely my least favorite task of the gardening experience is pulling weeds. But the way I do it is I try to get in and hand pull as much as I possibly can um, I get on my hands and knees and I get real aggressive going after those roots. I want to get the roots out so that the weed just doesn't return. So I go after the, the root of the weed as the best I can. And I collect all my weeds up in a bucket so I can completely remove them from the garden. I don't recommend throwing them in a compost pile because if you put them, put them in a compost pile, those seeds are in there with it, and then when you finally do go back and use your compost, it's full of weeds again. So I recommend just bag them up and uh, throw them away. I, um, the way we, we uh, use our uh, pulled up weeds is I like to feed them to our chickens. Our chickens completely love um, uh, weed, weeds when I bring them to them. It's a nice little treat for them. And, when you go out to uh, my raised beds, my, my raised beds are uh, a lot more narrow than my huge earth bed. So my, um, my um, raised bed, I can get on my hands and knees and just reach all the way across it. And I hand pull the, the um, weeds in the raised bed the same way. You know, I go after them roots as much as I can and get them out of there. And after I get through um, weeding my uh, raised bed and my earth bed, is I'll go back and um, cultivate. And I, that what little bit of weed was left after I hand pulled, if there was any roots that were still left in the ground that I may have broke off and didn't get all, all the way out, that cultivator goes down about three or four inches deep and it's gonna grind them up and to smithereens. So um, getting a little cultivator for your garden is a, a pretty good investment. Um, I've, been, I've thoroughly enjoyed mine and it, it's helped me for many, many years and I've always been quite pleased with uh, having a cultivator on hand to give me a hand with this stuff. And my second tip I wanted to, to give you, was, I don't like to use any of these homemade herbicides in the garden. I just stick to doing it by hand. It's okay for a fence line if you want to spray down a fence line or something like that, but the problem is is that the, the homemade stuff, it really just kills the foliage and the, the roots are going to come, uh, are going to survive it and the next thing you know, the weed returns. So um, if this is something you may want to do, um, I have a little formula here. This is my uh, little formula that I use for my homemade spray for places other than in my garden. Um, I take one gallon of white vinegar, one cup of table salt, and one tablespoon of liquid dish soap, I usually use Dawn, and uh, I shake that up and I, I apply that and spray it right over the uh, weeds. And this, will, this spray will kill the foliage, but remember it's not going to kill the roots, so it's gonna, the, the weed will quickly return within a couple of two or three weeks, so keep that in mind. 
And another reason that I never use this stuff inside my garden is I really don't want to introduce salt into my garden soil. So this spray is really for use other than um, the garden. And my third tip is um, you want to hand pull the weeds on the row in your earth bed. And there's only one way to do that, and that's the old-fashioned way. Get down on your hands and knees with a bucket and get in between each one of the plants and try to clear them out. And after you get the row clean, then you can go back and cultivate in between the rows. And that, that's a good way to keep, it, keep up with it. But um, this is something that I repeat every three to four weeks. This is just how I do it. Tip number four is... Uh, when your garden is in between the summer or the fall and winter garden, um, you want to continue to cultivate every three or four weeks. Just, you just want to keep, keep up with that because any little, the small little weeds that are popping up, you know, you can grind them up with that cultivator and you don't have to get on your hands and knees as long as you just keep up with the cultivating and uh, be consistent with it. Just don't let it get away from you. And tip number five is if your garden is not going to be used for an extended period of time, like maybe you only planted a spring and summer garden and um, in the uh, winter you don't plan to grow anything for the fall and winter. So that's a pretty good long period of time you're not going to have anything in your garden and that's a good opportunity for uh, weeds to just thrive out there. So what we do is uh, in areas that are going to be exposed like that for a long time with nothing in it, we, we cover it with a silage tarp, you know, and that's, that's pretty effective. And a lot of folks will, you know, sow out some cover crop over the, the garden for that time as well. And then in the, the next time you use a garden, you just turn it in and it returns a bunch of nitrogen back into the soil. So that's another good way. A nice dense cover crop chokes out the weeds. But uh, what we normally do is we just cover it up with a silage tarp. And um, whenever we get through, we'll roll that tarp back up and... Uh, save it because it can be used a bunch of times. We've had the same tarps out here for, you know, over five years now. So think about the silage tarp. It may be a, a solution to some of your uh, long-term uh, exposed garden that um, you can just keep under control without doing anything. <laughs> now, I like that. Uh, tip number six is whenever you're mowing in your garden area, if you got grass growing or anything growing there, when you're out there with the mower, try not to discharge the clippings into your garden because all that does is introduce all the weed and grass seed right back into the garden, and then <laughs> you, you just uh, it's a never-ending battle. And tip number seven is don't try to eliminate the weeds in your garden with a string trimmer or a weed eater. This also spreads the seeds and it really doesn't kill the roots and all you're really doing is you got a, a you know, a instant gratification of not seeing any weeds there, but what you really did was you multiplied the weed population by spreading the weeds even further around the garden. So don't put a string trimmer on them because it ain't gonna work. <laughs> and number eight, um, for my earth bed and my um, raised beds, I like to install a, um, a border on the perimeter of the earth beds. This prevents grass encroachment into the bed itself. And um, that is something I have always really liked. It helps me to keep it all con um, organized evenly and I can maintain the edge of that uh, perimeter box with a weed eater to keep the uh, grass from coming up in there. And it looks good, you know, and it's easy to do. Tip number nine is uh, to read, you know, a lot of folks have asked me, how, you know, you have all these grow tables under your, you know, container garden, and how do you keep all the weeds from just thriving under there? And, you know, that's a really good question because they will grow under that, under that table, uh, you know, at will. So the, what we do to reduce the weeds under our grow tables is I lay down a, sor a silage tarp all the way under the tables, and then I'll cover that tarp with um, straw or mulch. 
whichever you want to do. We use straw just simply because it's cheaper. But do keep in mind if you do use straw, um, the straw is going to contain seeds in it and then when that water drips down from when you're irrigating your um, container garden, all them little seeds that were in that straw all of a sudden will start to germinate and grow a little grass. And at that point I use my little uh, homemade weed killer and I'll go underneath the table and I'll spray it and yeah, it only kills the leaves, but remember the roots that are in this uh, straw, it really hasn't rooted into the ground. It's more like hydroponic, you know. It's kind of just thriving on off the moisture in the straw itself. But I have found that when I see that grass popping up underneath my um, grow tables in my straw, I hit it with the my little homemade weed killer a couple of times, and that does it. It, it don't come back the rest of the rest of the year. So one, one or two times with a spray and you got the job done. And my last tip is my probably my most favorite tip is try to accept the fact that you're never going to be 100% weed free in your garden. That's not feasible. The goal is to control the weed population, not eliminate it. So you just need to be consistent by staying on top of them and hand pulling and cultivating and all the things we talked about earlier. And you just don't want to let that weed population get established because once it gets established out there, man, it's tough to get it back under control. So keep in mind, this is an ongoing process. It's a never ending process and it's just something we have to do. Well, I sure thank you for watching today. I appreciate it. I hope that our video was fun for you and that maybe it maybe brought a little smile to your face and a little joy to your heart as we learned 10 little tips on uh, weed control for your garden and maybe it'll help you in your garden at home. So me and Nancy just want to say thank you for watching and until me and Nancy see you next time on the next video, always remember, by us hands, we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day.